Hello, my name is Elena Gray and I'm an 18 Media student. Thank you for joining me in discussing the synopsis of my horror trailer. So I'm going to start with the characters first. I intend to have a female protagonist because due to my research on psychological horror, females tend to be the main characters, the character of interest. They tend to be traumatised by the paranormal entities the most. Uh, she will be wearing normal clothing, like plain t-shirts, jeans, hair and ponytails, looking very normal, to represent the average everyday person. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, again, I feel like uh, the character has to be dressed like that in a horror film because then uh, we have to kind of think they're not going to survive because then, you know, it, it ramps up the tension when they, they, and, you know, you feel even more relieved when they do. Yeah. And uh, it, it kind of helps us to relate because yeah. if it's a normal person going through this, then uh, we can feel like we're in their shoes yeah. a lot more. Okay, and for my antagonist, I intend to have a paranormal entity that, appearance-wise, will have their face will be covered in bandages, but I will, will leave one of their eyes revealed, and I will create the makeup to look creepy around the eyes, so they have this sinister, mysterious look. Would you, as a viewer, see that as something that's creepy or scary at all? Uh, the makeup really needs. Uh, the makeup is good because uh, again you have to add a bit more of a natural factor to it. But yeah, again you need to work on like clothing and uh, that kind of thing has to be in tatters to make it look yeah. like she's old and yeah. uh, long dead. And uh, the, the actor needs to capture like some do some weird mannerisms, yeah. kind of like rapid twitching, you know, yeah. jerks and twitching, yeah. in order to um, project that it's in an inhuman. Creature. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to tell you the synopsis of my story. Uh, the female protagonist moves back to her old childhood house, so her parents are gone, she owns the house now, and she looks around the house, she remembers it like it was yesterday, she's getting nostalgic. She goes into a room and finds an old music box from when she was a child, and she opens it, a little ballerina starts spinning around and playing music. She wakes up the next day and there is this weird mark on her arm and she then starts seeing all these creepy figures and grotesque images everywhere she looks and the basic outline of the story is that she spends the rest of the film trying to figure out why this is happening to her. Uh, is there a message that's trying to be carried across? Is it something to do with her past? Um, so my location will dominantly be set in a house with maybe a few shots of like walking down the street or something. So, what are your thoughts on that? Um, uh, you're gonna have to time out specifically when you want to do uh, filming in the street stuff because yeah. like, uh, you do it too late like, during the day and there's gonna be tons of people crowded yeah. around. Um, I mean, the house you're gonna have to find some places where that doesn't look, that looks old enough but yeah. not too old that it's, it's in tatters. Yeah. Uh, you might need to find some more locations as well because you haven't really got that many at the moment. Yeah. You've literally got like two. Do you think a, you as a viewer would get bored if it was just set in one location? Um, no, because not if it's not if it's done well. Uh, it all depends on how it, on how you show it, really. Yeah. Okay. So that like editing and stuff, like editing, yeah. can you? Okay, thank you. Uh, props wise in my trailer I intend to obviously the music box will play a key part as it represents her childhood, maybe innocence. Um, in terms of weapons, the traditional conventional horror weapon is a knife. Usually it's easy to obtain and it's used as a weapon of defence. However, in my trailer, an event in the narrative causes my character to act drastically and an axe is involved. Do you think an axe is a good weapon to use in a horror trailer? What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, because, like, an axe is related to, like, nature and stuff, so you get that kind of the idea that it's primal and, yeah. um, obviously, you know, violence yeah. and stuff. Because, uh, what, what does she use it for? Um, in the narrative, I intend to in hint that it's to cut off a limb, but it would okay. cut before you see any of that. 
Okay, like, it just hint at if it. If she's using it against the ghost, that's just stupid. No one's going to buy that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, like, what even must it, the It's like a last resort kind of thing. I, d I don't know if I'd buy that she's going to cut her own arm off with an axe, though. Yeah. I mean, maybe if someone else did it, but yeah. like, she does it, then no, I don't buy that. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, camera angles, very important in any film. Um, for my film, I tend to use a lot of close-ups and to, to highlight the emotion of the characters and also mid shots to focus on the marking on the character's arm, her costume, characters in the background, maybe even long shots of like my characters running. Um, so what do you think is key in terms of camera shots? Um, do you want like specific names of camera shots? Just, um, just what you think looks good in terms of like horror and like psychological horror in specific. Um, well, I definitely think that the um, the ghost needs to be seen less. Yeah. Because uh, if you take something like, again, your, your friends are going to hate me for this, um, take something like Insidious, where you see the demon thing, like, part way through the film, like, okay, after you've seen it, it's just not, you know, it's not scary anymore. Cause yeah, you, you, start you know what it is, yeah. Yeah, you, you see it more and more, and... You're more scared of things you can't see than what you yeah. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't dwell on it, just hint at it, is what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, I mean, if you are going to show the ghost, do it like very briefly, like a couple second shots or something. Yeah. And even then, maybe not whole shots, just like of it standing behind her. Yeah. Things like that. Okay. Um, lastly, I want to talk about the music and the sound of the trailer. Uh, from my audience research, many of my audience members thought that sound was the most important thing in carrying across the horror genre. I intend to include an orgle sound, which is when um, you open a music box, the music that plays is called an orgle. And I wanted to use it because it's contrapuntal, it's usually a happy sounding tune and it contrasts with the with the scary situation that is usually going on. Um, but also include like screams, cries, um, shouts, and of distress from the characters. So, what what are your thoughts on that? Um, um, yeah, I mean the, con the contrapuntal sound coming from the music box is uh, pretty important. And you could have that playing while you got a just the, the sound of the music box playing in the background. And you could have like tons of scenes from. Uh, from the trailer, like people getting scared, dragged off, and yeah. you know, people running around with knives and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you can have that, like, no sound coming from those clips, just the sound of the music playing. Yeah. That would make it a little more creepy. Because yeah. It's kind of like the idea of innocence being corrupted, I guess. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be sweet music, and it's happening in such horrible things that's happening on screen. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.